Welcome back everyone. Now that our masks have been removed, we can proceed with measurements for our new standing rigging and here to help us is our friend and professional rigger, Memo. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Each wire was laid out and carefully measured. We were stoked to have Memo here helping us with the rig plan. These measurements of the wires and pin size have to be very precise. So they measured a couple of times each one to make sure that there were no errors. As the standing rigging will be manufactured in Australia by the expert team at Hemmer Marine. All right, we're gonna move the mizzen down the side next to our boat. It had been a very long, very stressful and hot day and this burger tasted pretty great. I know it was a beautiful thing before, that's so amazing. <laughs> so Memo, you didn't think it was worth replacing the rig, it all looks good. Yeah, should we put it back up? Yeah. <laughs> was it worth doing, is all this necessary? Absolutely, I think. It was past overdue. Yeah? Yeah, she needed it. So you said a lot of it's mismatched and it's probably been worked on in different spots of the globe, but what, what, what sort of tells you that it's no good? Well, most of the cables are barber pulling, which means that they are corroded in, in the middle. And we just don't know how old it is. And considering the mismatch, the rigging is a whole consistency thing. And if there's only one thing that is not right, the whole thing kind of came down on the road. So seeing like everything different and something millimetric and some like imperial, that makes lead you to think that some things were changed at some point and but not the other ones and some they have probably never been changed. And you just can't take the risk of one cable snapping because you can lost it all. What about the mass memo? What are the good and bad points? Is there a lot of stuff that needs to be changed out or the mast is a beast at first sight it doesn't look like it has any cracks or it doesn't look like it's anything bad we gotta inspect a little deeper because they are covered by paint yeah and uh whatever we'll, we will attack try to find the weak points where it can potentially be a, a danger but the caliber of this aluminum is pretty thick it's a Thick rig. Old school, not like the newer ones locked no. in. No, no, no. It's at least double than the new ones. You got for the main mast all in like 716 cables, which is a little overkill. The idea is that you got your mast and the cap shrouds, the four stay and the back stay, they need to be thicker because they're under a bigger load because leverage. And as you go down, technically you can lower the gauge of the cable because it's not the same amount of load right and you reduce weight that it improves in performance and everything so as you go down you could potentially like get smaller cables because the mass is trying to go when you're loaded but it's not going to try to go with the same load down here than up here and having all these really fat cables like i mean it's in the mathematic form is not you're not carrying the same load down there than up there basically it's right necessary. it's a little unnecessary but at the same time, it's determined by the pin sizes. Memo and Dad went over the mast looking at all the elements that would potentially need replacing or attention. Taking down the mast was a huge job, but it's just the start. There's a lot more work ahead as we prepare for a new rig. Can you run to the shop for me? I sure can. Want to know what I'm using to get to the shops? You might be curious, since we live on a boat, how do we get around when we're on the land? Well, 
This video today is proudly brought to you by electric bikes. The way that we get around when we're on the land. These bikes are so convenient for when we want to stock up the boat or when we just want to go on epic adventures. We've had the bikes for 18 months now and it's just a great way to experience a little bit more of the land sides of the locations that we go to on our adventures. They conveniently fold up and we keep them in our engine bay. We love, love our electric bikes. Like they're awesome, especially because there's four of us. And we can all go places all together. We have definitely definitely tested these out, carrying sales and doing lots of provision runs. Who says you need a car? These e-bikes are great and even though they do take up space in our small home, we think they're worth it. Alright, let's get back to the video. We just want to say a massive thank you to Memo, we love you mate. We're about to attack our chain plates. Taj has gone around, he's removed all the screws from our cover plates here. We're going to be removing these plates and followed by removing the chain plates. So it should be a pretty straightforward process. Down below, these are bolted. And there's several bolts holding these together. There will probably be more work in accessing all these plates. So they're behind covers, they're behind mirrors. Uh, we're not sure of the age, nor are we sure of the condition of all the plates, but the importance of blue water sailing and having these plates structurally strong or sound is huge. You lose your plate, you lose your rig in worst case scenario. We'll jump downstairs soon and access the bolts, undo these, pull them out. There's a vanity here and all the shelves have been removed and now we have access to our first chain plate. We're going to inspect the first one. This one's our forward lower. It's got four bolts. It's got the grounding wire on there so we know it's been grounded all this time. Ours, it's cord, it's got sealant. There's a place where crevice corrosion could definitely form here. Alright, so I'll just loosen these to begin with. Little thing I've noticed with these chain plates is it's double washered on the back and double wash it on the front. I am assuming these bolts were too long, uh, as you can see up the top. Really only need two threads showing up coming out the end. There's a lot of corrosion and rust down in here, so I dare say we will be replacing all the bolts. We'll address that once we got all these bolts out, potentially getting a different size bolt. I, I realize they've tried to keep the thread away from the plate but these are longer and probably slightly too long, but I suppose it depends what you can get. These are pretty stubborn, so what I usually do is I put my nut back on. You don't want the head hanging out. You just move that back a little bit so that the head of the actual bolt isn't showing. And then you can hit it like so. The reason I do that is because if I was to get the hammer, and hit this edge here, I damage it, and then you go to put a nut on, and you can't get it on. But we'll assess these a bit more once we clean them up. They are heavy duty, but we'll have to really just have a good look at these bolts, since there is rust and corrosion on them. Get this last bolt out. Okay. It should slide through. It probably should slide through, actually. There is sealant, it might be easy to push them out. So there's a little bit of sealant where the core is. The next step Here we have our first lower forward chain plate. Just looking straight at it like this, it might not look too bad. If we actually have a really close look, this chain plate is actually cracked. So it's swollen here, there's crevice corrosion to, there's actually cracking the whole way down here. I can just see, without even cleaning this up yet, I can see one, two, three, four. There's like several cracks before I've even started on this plate. So if we were to have some heavy weather in an ocean crossing, there's no saying that this chain plate could definitely just give way. Absolute mess. I'm half tempted to put this, bolt this downstairs and swing a hammer on this and see if I can actually get this just to snap on camera. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it's that far gone that it will just snap. Chain plate number two, which is our port centre one. So there was two chain plates here, our main and our forward lower. Four down. A fair few more to go. Alright guys, so not always is the job easy. I cut a little hole just here so I can access the bolts. The bolts need to come out. 
it's behind the speaker, otherwise it will remove all this cabinetry, the headliners, and it's a much bigger job. And this will be an easy way to inspect in the future. So this is where the little oscillating tool comes in handy. I can get in and just neatly cut out a little inspection port here and I can remove the bolts and uh, 10 years time I'm going to go, geez that was a smart idea Lee. Anyway. The third chain, oh they came out easy. Third chain plate coming out. The two other ones are absolutely terrible. They're in the really bad way. Oh yeah there's all, yeah you can see it here there's, I'm looking over all this rust but you can see all this here it's all cracked they're really poor shape not this one's not as bad as the other ones but yeah I haven't even cleaned this up yet though our danger area is here and you can see cracking coming out of here like you can stick your fingernail in that it's um I don't know if you can see it in the camera but Not as bad as the other side. So far, access has been pretty good. This is the last one of the forward chain plates. What do you reckon, Moritai? They are. I think we've found another one that's got a lot of cracking on it. There's a vented loop for our emergency bilge pump. It's quite a big one. Uh, there'll be a deck fill for our water, a few electrical wires, speaker, easily accessed here so we can replace this. So like I said earlier, I leave the nuts on while I'm tapping them. All the grounding wires will definitely need cleaning up. I've had a slight bit of salt over them I'd say over the years. that out and uh, that's our last chain plate for the main. You inspecting. Do you do a good job Motai? So this is a fun little spot. Alright they's doing the other the aft chain plates this morning. <laughs> I'm trying to open the door. Anyway okay. make yourself I'm useful open. and open get tools. get into it. It's uh right there. I can nearly get it out but I'll probably just pull it out from the top. I uh, haven't inspected that yet, but the bolts were in poor condition. So we've spent the last day or day and a half removing all of our chain plates. This is my first time pulling out the chain plates. On Catalpa 1, we didn't remove the chain plates. It's not that we didn't want to, our chain plates were integral. So they were built into the boat. We replaced all the rigging before we left. These, we had access to all of them and we were able to get everyone out. What are we gonna do from here? So I had a couple of thoughts before we pulled them out. I thought maybe they might be okay. I've read that you can inspect them, you can look at them, you can give them a tidy up. You can run dye on them and look for cracks and the dye will show up. I, I start looking at them like, oh, they're not too bad. And then I start seeing cracks just start showing up. From my opinion, just looking at them, and I've never done this before, I can see cracks i can see swelling me looking at these i'm so glad we pulled these out because i actually didn't think they were going to be in this bad a shape from the top of them they look pretty good and then as soon as we got below deck or maybe sort of say in the core and then below deck they're not looking so great now if all the chain plates are the same age or and i don't even know if these are original it wouldn't surprise me if they're original but they're cracked right through and like they're all bubbled and cracked and that's the first pivot point for that stay that's just ready to snap in my opinion that's scary definitely not going back in the boat they're ready for the bin as far as i'm concerned that's just a recipe for disaster option was going to be make them myself or find someone that can make them properly now chain plates to me are a huge part of having your rig secure as much as you don't want your wire to break your fitting to fail 
you don't want these to snap off either. Your whole rig is only as good as the weakest link. And in our case, we're going to have a whole new rig up top. We're going to have all new wires, we're going to have all new fittings. And to leave these on the boat, it would have been our weakest link. So what I've decided with our chain plates, I'm not going to muck around with this. To me, this needs to be spot on, 100%. It needs to be done right. So we're going to be working with Schaefer Marine. Now they're going to be supplying the new chain plates for Catalpa 2. We're going to send off these chain plates. I'd personally like to know what they think of our existing chain plates and see their opinion. Obviously these guys look at chain plates every day. These are going to go in the post tomorrow and Schaefer's going to receive them and then we're going to get these underway. So until we get them back, we'll show you then. Okay guys, so we uh, haven't really had a good look at the mast yet. We've actually, once we stepped the mast, we sort of sat it down here in its spot. And we've been busy getting the chain plates out and finalizing all the measurements so we can get it sent off to Hammer and get our chain plates sent off to Schaefer. Just starting at the mast head here, um, you can see there's a lot of corrosion on here. I don't know if you can tell, but so the first thing we've got to look at, obviously anywhere where there's stainless steel, there's bubbling of the, the paint. It's just, that's just how it is with, with aluminium. So we have a couple of options here. We can either sandblast and repaint the mast. We can either do the little patches and patch and prime or sand, prime and paint them. We can sandblast the whole thing and then we can prime and paint or we could remove the paint and put a sealer on it and leave it aluminium. All these will depend on a few things. How much of this there is all over the mast. So there's a fair bit of bubbling on the mast here and there. So you've got to draw the line somewhere and say, well, is, is it just worth sandblasting and painting the whole mast or is it worth patching? So there's here, here, there's anywhere where there's a penetration and spots where maybe halyards have rubbed too. So yeah, we'll have to make a decision on that part of it. So working our way down from the top, we will be removing every fitting, inspecting every nut, every bolt. Uh, we'll be removing these tangs. They look quite all right. So I'll probably get Taj onto the buff and we'll buff these up. There's no cracking. There's a little bit of discoloring there, but it sees the air. Um, I'll just be inspecting underneath and make sure it looks good underneath there. And then we'll re-bed these. I'm not sure of the product yet. I know there's like Duralac and there's um, Tef Gel and there's a few compounds out there that people all have their personal preference on. These can be put in with Loctite or they could be corroded or they could just come out nice and easy. Don't know. But that's where we're at and working our way down. Our steaming lights are pretty much seen better days. Blocks like this will be removed. I think this, these two blocks here may have been for lazy jacks and we have the furling boom so we won't, we won't need those but like everything, stainless steel and the paint just doesn't like it. So it's a little bit old school these. These have been welded on. It's had stainless steel fastenings around here. Um, all the paint just falls off, so I'll just be want to have a good look and inspect all these welds here and make sure they're all good. Again, you can see that just really just lets go. What's everyone's thoughts on this? Paint it, leave it raw, or uh, patch paint it. What do you think? It does come down to a budget too. So this is our inner four stay. Let's have a look here and see here incorrect size pin so they're the things we're looking for and just to try and correct why we're in the right spot why they done that i don't know maybe it looks like a new pin so maybe there was a problem with the old pin and that's all they had available at the time but even apart from this this whole contraption i pretty much think we're going to go and it'll, that'll just be a um a jaw toggle there that whole contraption will probably go again we'll rebed all these fittings you can see all the corrosion Hang off. I've had them soaking in penetrating oil. 
Doesn't actually look too bad, this one. Doesn't seem to be any crevice corrosion. There's been a sort of rubber mat between the two. There's a little bit of corrosion just here, just where the bolt goes through the middle. But we'll clean that up and have a look at that. Whether we need to shim that out or not, I'm not sure yet. We'll get all these polished up. Which, looking at these, could be pretty good. Labeling as I go. We continue to strip the mast and prepare for the next steps. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay tuned and we'll keep you posted in this journey through our rig refit. It's pretty exciting. See you on the next one. Bye.